I had the best gunner in the entire 9th Army in that seat. Now I got you. I started this war killing Germans in Africa. Now I'm killing Germans in Germany. I promised my crew a long time ago I'd keep them alive. Why are you here? He kills you, or you kill him. I need you to perform. I can't do it! Yes, you can. April 1945. <laughs> World War II is coming to an end. <laughs> well, I stop that shit. Stop it. That's a, that's not bad, Walter Winchell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but... Well, let me tell y'all something, man. Fury. Fury. A lot of people been wondering about this movie because, hey, Brad Pitt. Everybody looks forward to a new Brad Pitt movie. Especially when he's that, that, that army commander from, from, uh, from, from Inglorious from, Bastards. <laughs> what his name? Hall, uh, uh, something Rain, Sergeant Rain. <laughs> yeah. No, y'all ain't, you ain't gonna be talking like this and shit. No, don't get, no, 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 no. This no. is, this is him putting that aside. This is like, uh, this, this is like his character from, uh, from, from, uh, Inglorious Bastards. As if he finally got some sense. Been yeah. the army long enough. It's it's, it's like Inglorious Bastards is the cartoon version of the character he is here. It is. Mm. It is. It's another World War II movie. People like that. And I tell you what, man, war is hell. <laughs> and if you thought it was hell before, you you don't know hell. <laughs> no, <laughs> shit. Even Saints like I don't want to see this shit. <laughs> I ain't going there. <laughs> right. Even Private Ryan be like, no, nah, man, I can't do that. I, I ain't going back. But the other thing is. What's this old crazy ass Shia LaBeouf doing? <laughs> Finally quit fucking with them Transformers and trying to be a real actor now. Yeah, actually acting. Yeah, like, actually acting. Like, I, it's the first Shia LaBeouf movie where I wasn't thinking of him as Shia LaBeouf. Does uh, one of these tanks turn into a Transformers or some <laughs> shit? No, no, no. We'll talk about all this. We'll cover all this. But yes, as I said before, this is April of 1945. It's the near end of World War II. The Allies, you know, they almost got this thing. Allies about to end this. They say, you know what? We got them on the run. It's done. But the Germans are not giving up. But they ain't giving up. The, fucking... the never say die Germans are still in there fighting. They still out there fighting their ass. It's, it's the, the war is over. Pretty much. Everybody's getting ready to go home, but they, you know how it is. Everybody's, every, in fact, everybody's packing their bags. Brad Pitt got his bag. He's getting ready to go see y'all. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Brad, Brad, come here. <laughs> you, you and your boys, not, not you. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> No, bring, bring your ass back here. It ain't done. In fact, not only is it not done for your team yet, but we're going to send you into the most dangerous part of enemy territory. Yes. There's still hundreds of them. Um, their tanks are better than yours. Oh, the, yeah. And it's pretty much just your tank and maybe two or three others. Yeah. But good luck. Yeah. Get out there. Oh, and go team. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, when you get out there, you're going to be horribly outnumbered. Yes. And outgunned. Outgunned. And, uh, and he's like, well, how am I going to do that? Because I lost one of my main guys. That's okay. We got a fresh new guy for you <laughs> who's never done anything but write papers in his who, life. Who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> that ain't even his job. <laughs> but, hey, you got this, right? Right. Yeah, you got it. You, <laughs> man, you the best. We, we know that if anybody can handle this, it'd be you. You're our guy. Yeah. You never let us down. And tell you what, you know, we, we know you got this. In fact, you got that old Mexican cholo in there with you too right there. Look, he's ready, he ready for some shit. Yeah, man, you got this. You got this. And Brad Pitt says, well, you know what? I'm not one to ever run from a fight. Outnumbered, outgunned, outmanned. I don't give a shit. I'm going to hold down one last stand against a huge Nazi battalion because I'm fury. Yeah. You know, and, and tell you something. I'll put it this way. If the first 10 minutes of saving Private Ryan fucked you up, do not go see this movie. No. Because that's all this, this is. This movie's, yeah, it's all, it's like somebody said that like, man, Private Ryan was just kind of a letdown after that first 10 or 15 minutes. I want a movie to give me that feeling all the way through. It's like, well, here you go. This is, man, this is, this is some, imagine if you took saving, saving Private Ryan and combined it with Saw. <laughs> I mean, every 10 minutes, somebody's getting their heads blown off. Somebody's burning alive. Somebody's getting shot up and riddled with bullets. I mean, by the time, but when I walked out the theater, I thought I'd been through war. I walked out, I was like, shit. Well, especially hold me. considering the theater we saw it in at the Violet Crown, where you, those speakers are like right there. Like that, this, you know what? I don't care whatever happens the rest of this year. This movie wins for best sound editing. 
because it puts you right there on the battlefield. You, you you can close your eyes and be scared, and you're still going to feel like you're right there. Oh, oh hell yeah. <laughs> and see, and I'm going to tell you all something. This is why I love sitting next to Martin sometimes, because Martin... Martin loves doing this shit. Martin wants to be part of the movie. <laughs> when Martin, whenever I'm watching a movie with Martin, Martin, you know, I say, I say, is this seat good enough? And Martin like, nope. Is this seat good enough? And Martin like, nope. Is it good enough now, Martin? Nope. Damn, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> is this good enough, Martin? <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Martin, Martin got to see. Martin got to be right in the movie. And when I was watching this movie with him, those bullets were flying, those tank shells were going, and the whole time, Mar, you didn't see yourself, but you were like, <laughs> ducking and shit. I was like, yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm happy. She was like, woo! Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I was like, yeah, that's what you get. That's what you get. Even though I was sitting up right there with you, shit, Mar. Man, hold me, man, hold me, shit. <laughs> Putting you in front of me, <laughs> man. This this movie, I gotta tell you, and I, and I don't know if some people are gonna see this as being an exploitation of war, or if some people are gonna see this as something that's too violent for them. But this is uh, this one. Uh, I mean, as far as a war film goes, I mean, this is one of the best war films I've seen in a long Absolute time. So goddamn lootly. I don't care what anyone says. Me I mean, either. I mean, because the thing is, yeah, we talk about how it's you know it's it's the, that all out brutal action. That quiet. That's quiet moments. Uh, doesn't mean they weren't tense. <laughs> I mean, there's 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 a bit there's a big scene that was one of the most tense scenes in the movie. Oh, there ain't no shooting going on, but I was just like, oh, come on, come yeah. on, guys. And it, you know, you got these characters, <coughs> you know, your your heroes. And a quiet moment, you find out that these ain't really good guys. They're only good in as much as compared to the Nazis that they're trying to kill. The, the, man, the, that's that's one of the things I liked about the movie. Now. It, they, these guys get their shit together, and they are heroic. And at some point in the movie, like I said, it 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 does that thing where we got to make this one last stand. We kind of have to, we kind of have to sit up here and make a, a sort of an atonement for the the assholes that we've been yeah. throughout this film. And even at that, and at that point, it's a great rallying point, and it's very tense because you look at the condition that these guys are in, and you just saw the Nazi battalion that's coming up, and you're like, no, like, no ain't no ain't, fucking way. Ain't no fucking way. I mean, I should have been Brad Pitt's talking all this shit. I'm going to hold it down. Even I was going to make it your ass out of there. <laughs> Even Shia LaBeouf was like, are you fucking crazy? Man, he's a religious man. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn SS battalion. Just get it, all right? Look, it's about to be dark. Just get on up out of here, huh? Let them pass on through. Let's hit some woods. Through Norman, go get your pack. Let's go. We ain't never run before. I ain't running now. We're gonna fight it out. We can't. I'm gonna hold this crossroad. What you mean you're gonna hold this? The tank's busted. The tank's fucking busted, top. Yeah, you said that. Top, what are you doing? What do you want to do? You want to sit here? We're hold this you want to sit here? Hold off the SS battalion? No, it's not what I want to do, but it's what we're doing. There's five of us. Get your fighting position. Mount up. Fighting positions when we ain't got to tell you how we going to fight. We got a cannon. No, that fight. don't make Top. sense. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What? Hey, Brad Pills like a shot still looking at me. <laughs> 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 I wonder if there's that point where he, when he got up there, he was like, "This is kind of crazy." Yeah, he's like, "But I've made a speech now." He's like, oh, <laughs> shit, "I just fucked myself up right now." Look at him. he's like, "God damn!" I thought they were actually telling me to stop. You oh, know? No. <laughs> and they really going along with this shit? Yeah, yeah I, I really counted on them pulling me off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought at least one of them would grab me or some shit, but fuck, they ain't doing nothing. They going along with this crazy right. shit. Well, right I guess we get up there with you. No, okay. No, fuck, shit. No. Okay. You know, it's funny because he is looking like he he really isn't like he's scared of Shia LaBeouf right now because Shia LaBeouf, y'all know he's crazy. And throughout this movie, he gives you a look and you like, yeah, this motherfucker's crying crazy already. <laughs> Brad Pitt was kind of scared right there. <laughs> Shit, this motherfucker's still looking at me. <laughs> Brad, it's Child of Boop is really like, man, I'm, I'm not acting right now. Get your ass off that goddamn tank. <laughs> motherfucker, come on down. But I'm telling you, Child of Boop, all you people that have been talking about him, again, another case where I, I don't know, everybody's made fun of Child of Boop. I've made fun of Child of Boop, but. I've always thought that this guy was a really good actor, and uh, when you watch this movie, he uh, he uh, like uh, 
like a lot of actors we've been talking about today, he's he's given a, a performance like we've never really seen before. Exactly. A lot, you know, when it first started out, he was kind of talking like this and doing that country thing. But then I uh, and I thought, oh man, he's putting it on too thick right there. But after a while, I said, man, this guy, he truly is a great actor. And you know, all that craziness that people talking about mm -hmm. with him, cutting his face and shit. I said, whatever he did, it worked. It worked. Yeah. Whatever he had to do, but. And then some other people in the movie that you've seen before, uh, what's his name, John Bernthal? Yeah. Is it John or Joe? Is it John? It's uh, John. Okay. It's John Bernthal. Y'all might remember him from The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Shane. Uh, Shane. Yeah, yeah he's, Shane. He's, he's crazy, uncontrollable Shane again. <laughs> he, man, he really is. There, there he is in the background right there. He's, he's fucking crazy Shane again. Yeah. But this, is, this time, it's like Shane has just gone off the deep end. Yeah. In fact, they call him coon ass, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's what he is. And, <laughs> and that's the thing about the movie. He's a fucking animal, man. He is. He's an animal. I mean, there's a part in this movie where they, uh, it, uh, 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 Brad Pitt goes in, tries to have, they're in the middle of war. He's trying to be as civilized mm -hmm. and, and trying to have as nice of a civilized moment and dinner with these two German girls that they found. Yeah. And the rest. And it's, it's going well. They're having a nice, quiet time. And it's him and that kid, uh, 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 Logan Lerman. Right. Uh, what's Percy his name? Jackson. Percy Jackson. Yeah. Even Percy Jackson, after he done fought gods and shit, he got in the middle of that, that war. He's like, oh, shit, I can't take this shit. Hell, I beat up Zeus, and I can't take this shit right there no more. But when they go in they, and, and try to have this dinner, and even Brad Pitt is saying, this kid is new here. He's a little frazzled. Let, him show, let me show him some compassion. I've been showing, I've been, I've I've been, been riding his I've ass. I've been riding his ass. I've been, I've, I've been making him do unspeakable things yeah. right here. And it's kind of cool. And the rest of these guys come in. And, and they, they show up, and it's just like. It's the. It's, uh, it's Michael Pena, John Bernthal, and Shia LaBeouf. All of, all of those guys come in, and they're, they're just they're animals. They're animals, man. And it's, and it's a good thing because it shows you, it's, it's almost, it, it questions you about what war does to people. Right. You know, you get to a point where, man, it just ain't no sides anymore. War just makes people assholes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it's, it's also the, the thing that makes this not like a Kelly's Heroes. Like, you know, it's, it's that, that, that band of lovable chums that we just want to see kill Nazis and, and have their camaraderie. You know, you, it, it stop and makes you, it makes you question how you feel about these guys. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and how you have to feel about them and, and their, their whole situation. You, yeah, you have to take it all in. And, it's, yeah. it's not just, you know, it's not a John Wayne movie. And, and a lot of people, I think a lot of people are upset about this because they don't like the idea of veterans, American veterans being shown as animalistic, yeah. as being rapists, as being potential rapists and thugs out there. But, I mean, I, I think that that's the reality of war. And, right. And David Ayer is the one that wrote this. And I got to applaud my man for, like, not flinching at that. He oh, said, absolutely. He, you know, he said, look, this is how war is. War turns people into animals. Well, it's, there's also a thing, like, when they first get Logan Lerman, you know, on their squad. And he's just been a, a pencil pusher up to this point. And now, you know, you got to get in this tank. You got to kill Nazis. And they, they abuse him. And, <laughs> and, 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 and initially, you know, there's that feeling, at least for me, that's like, Come on, man. You in here. You got to buck up. You got to be a man. Stop being a pussy. Do what yeah. they, do what they yeah. tell you. But they take it to a level where you're like, man, y'all really need to back off this kid. This is too much. See, that's another thing in the movie. I was like, no, nah, get on that ass. <laughs> get right that ass because you're about to get somebody killed. Yeah, it's true. And, and Very true. the only reason why I feel sorry for him because they, <laughs> they said him that they took this man, they took this kid, put him in a tank as a tank gunner. And when they sat him down, they said, what did you do before this? He's like, Man, I type 30 words a minute. <laughs> Who the fuck messed this up? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, really, really, somebody messed up some some paperwork somewhere. He's yeah. not supposed to be there. Right. But that's the only reason why I feel upset, sorry for him. But once they put his ass in there and he started fucking up and getting people killed, <laughs> yeah. I was like, Brad Pitt got him by his face. And he's like, he said, fuck up again. Fuck up. And he's like, he's like okay, I'll, I'll do it all. I was like, no, punch him in his face, man. That ain't enough. Listen, we, we can't go nowhere till you kill a Nazi. Bring that one over here. No, yeah. You kill him. Huh, I don't want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, boy, you better you better pull that trigger out. You know what he should have done? Should have put a bullet in the back of his head, or a gun in the back. Of his, should have pulled a training down his ass. It practically, did. I yeah. mean, that's that's what the first half of this movie is. Yeah. Is them doing a training day on it on on his ass? Yeah, it was like five Denzels on one little white boy. <laughs> no, it was like it, you know what? It, it was like a Denzel gangbang. Right. You better shoot that motherfucker, man. <laughs> And man, watching this, I was like, man, if he's ten years younger, Brad Pitt so could have been Captain America. Oh yeah, a lot of people saying it, and I'm gonna tell you something. We've been talking about the the message of war. Yeah, war is hell. War is hell. Everybody's heard that before. That 
I'm about to give you hell for that fucking phone right there. <laughs> man, as much as your phone's been going off lately. <laughs> yeah, I get, get tired of your ass whistling at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All I had was a whistle. Yours will go yeah, with, with a complete you better sing a complete song and then you sit there and answer the damn phone in the middle of the show you better pull that bird out your ass cheeks and cut him and shut him up <laughs> you, you need to back off I ain't Logan Lerman <laughs> hey man, I'm about to pull a Brad Pitt on you you better shoot that motherfucking bird right now man do it <laughs> alright before I before I shoot you with this imaginary bullet right here <laughs> You know the, the the now the the thing is that the, the, there's a, there there is that message there. That's what all war movies do. They want to show you how hell war, uh, at least good authentic war movies want to show you that war is hell. But right here, there's a lot of action here too. For those of you who don't want to message with this, there's a you know, you know what I'm saying. Some people oh, just yeah. want to see action. Like oh, I yeah. said, if you a lot of blood, a lot of gore, and they have a tank scene in here that blew my mind. Man. I know. It's like a tank standoff. Yeah, they, they made it interesting. Uh, what was that? What the heck? I lost it. What are you all right? Huh? I can't you your switch your manual. Fight for you, stay in the fight. I'm a pedal. I'm fine. Oh, there you are. Coming around, he's coming around. All right, you gotta run that gun. No, I got it, I got it. Fire. What a, what a this was intense, man. It was. Michael, put it up his ass. One of the armor's men. Oh, no. Get him! Oh, you bear! Hold the line! God damn it, I took the ass! I'm moving too fast! Is that that? Get Come in! Come on, boys, stay on it! Roger, when I say back up, you back up, left stick. All right, all right! Bible, stand by, I'll call the shot. Roger, Roger! Roger, now, reverse! Reverse! Left stick! Roger, <laughs> Bible, steady! Steady! Look, he's coming out! Come on, Bobo! Come on, you shoot him! Steady! Now! Go on! Wait, one more! One more! Quick, 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 quick! Hey! Again! On one! <laughs> you understand? My, I was, my, and my, now, Martin, my line. Yeah. At, at, at this part in the clip right there, Martin did. <laughs> and now, now, imagine, imagine if a clip has your ass jumping like that. Imagine what the movie's like. Yeah, being in the theater. Like, yeah. It, yeah, I. Of all the movies I've seen this year, this is the one where I'm like, you have got to see this in the theater. Yeah, yeah. It's, like I said, people, you know, I. I don't know. I'm I'm giving like a really glowing review of this, and I mean, I, just like any movie, it does have its has has its faults. I mean, there are times when I think uh, the characters are sometimes just in that assholeish way, are just a little flat. I mean, it's uh, I think we could have we could have seen more to that side of them. I think I got the message with them, and then the end of the movie, you do. But also, um, I think that there's some really for a movie that this it's this hard. And it, and is this uh, brutal? There's some sappy parts in there, uh, the, and, and I'm not talking about the parts where you know guys are being gentle to women and being nice to them. It's just that the message of the brutality of this is is so it's so uh, I guess it's so heavy that you know that when any time anybody is shown any kindness, the movie has to say, oh, but in this world, kindness is not accepted. Mm. <laughs> you know, and and I thought, well, I, I got that. I kind of got mm. that. I mean, maybe if I I'm not saying that that couldn't have been there, but if it if it wasn't so predictable in that way, I think I would have accepted that a little bit better. I don't think it was so much kindness is not accepted. It was just like kindness, not kindness. It doesn't matter because this shit is going on everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but it's a good movie overall. Like I said, I don't think uh, there are some people who are they're not going to like this movie. Sure. It's just going to be a little too over the top for them. It's going to be too violent for them. Some people probably going to even say that it's violent in a cartoony way. And I can see that in some parts. I mean, you know, they blow up a lot of heads in here. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've seen the movies where they they blow up heads, and it just makes me go like, "All right, you did that just for shock value." But here, I I never got that feeling. I mean, it was just brutal. But the camera didn't linger on any of it. A lot of it was just happening around, and it it, it wasn't trying to soak it all in and go like, "Huh? Check that out." Yeah. Oh damn! You see what we did just there? It was kind of like. Yeah, this is just kind of a bad environment to be in, and a lot of us are just here as you know fodder, just just kind of a meat grinder. I I think this movie like there's some war movies you might want to get your your granddad and go like, hey, granddad, let's watch this, and it'll like remind you of the old days of being in war and like make you feel like a hero. 
And this is one that would give your grandfather or great grandfather uh, PTSD. <laughs> Do not, don't you ever, ever show your grandfather this. Your grandfather gonna be on the table. Are they out there? They still there? Grandpa, come out! Shit, no! Don't get down! <laughs> Just, just let him stay for a little yeah, while. Right. You know? Like, why'd you show him that? <laughs> yeah. Damn. You, you did this. You ain't got no sense in your head, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we could watch it together. <laughs> yeah, man. I, and, and for me, in some parts, it was like that. It was one violent act after another. And I even thought, like, man, you know something? I think at, it gets to a point where I can already tell when something was going to die because the rhythm of the movie is like that. It's like, uh, it's just... You know, I, I know when something's too quiet, it works for the intensity of the film because I'm thinking, all right, you know what? Yeah, it's it's way too quiet right now. Yeah. Some, and then I'll even look at people and I say, all right, uh, you better put your head back in that tank. And they didn't do it. And they, that head was gone. <laughs> well, that, but there's so much. I mean, you're right about it having those, but then so many of the other people just around mm-hmm. getting blown up in ways and Nazis too. It all that did was was serve to like remind you like what the stakes were here oh yeah oh yeah you know what it, and it was one of those things too where they show i mean it, I, you don't see this too often people death by tank yeah some people just got ran over yeah it happened <laughs> now, that's i'll tell you what our grandfathers whether you were on the nazi side or the american side our grandfathers were some tough motherfuckers because <laughs> if i see a tank coming towards me i'm gonna run uh-huh. and one dude just stand there just look at a tank you know just shooting right up on him and then he's gonna scream like he's surprised oh shit what's happening you you in front of a tank man what the fuck you think was gonna happen <laughs> but i i give the movie i give the movie a full price i mean like i said i'm into that brutal side of uh of 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 war, you know, in a film, I'm the I'm the motherfucker that's looking at saving Private Ryan. Like, okay, y'all shut up, shoot somebody, right? Kill right. someone, somebody blow up. Yeah. yeah. Now I, I I give it a full price. Also, it was uh, I mean, I expected it to be good or okay, and I was taken I was I was taken by surprise, and just you know, I felt immersed in it the the entire time, as you said, and um, it was very effective on me. Like like I I my jaws were clenched. The whole time the movie was on, I didn't. It wasn't until it was done where I was like, "Ah, ah, okay," <laughs> and I can breathe again. Yeah, man, it was it was a very very intense film, and I talk about Saving Private Ryan. I'm kidding about the fast forwarding part, but what, what I like about a movie like this, like I said, is it's written by David Ayer, uh, D- David, David Ayer, Ayers, and and he's got a great eye for action that I hadn't seen before, like like with this film, mm-hmm. uh, Sabotage was his last movie. Which you one was, remember, was it? Was a, that was the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, man. Oh, oh, jeez. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> to do then that one was kind of weak. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that I saw, I said, man, you know what? There's a, but he's great at action though. Mm-hmm. And with this one, he was able to bring in some great characters, a, a good story, and in the action that's right there. And also, if you, and he's responsible for Training Day. So if I make a Training, he wrote Training Day. So I make uh-huh. a Training Day reference okay. here. It's it's legitimate. Okay. If you, if you watch Training Day, and you remember that scene where we had, oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the Ethan white one. Hawk. Ethan, Ethan, Ethan <laughs> Hawk. Yeah, the white that boy. Scene where Ethan Hawk is in there with these Mexicans. Yeah. And, it's, and, and, it's, uh, and, it's, and the, the intensity just keeps building up. The dinner scene that we were talking about in this movie is just as intense. Mm. He's, a, he's almost like Quentin Tarantino in yes. a way where he knows how to sit down, have people just have dialogue, and that shit just keeps getting thicker and, and you're just thicker. like where's this gonna go i know you're getting so <laughs> man you you getting so nervous you're just kind of like shit, somebody just shoot each other right <laughs> shit I'm, I'm okay all right i get it i get it david ayers also was uh a lot of his movies take place in la mm. a lot that's his stumping ground i think i'm talking about rough la yeah and that was another complaint i had about the movie man he can't let that la alone man he can't leave uh uh michael pena's in the movie man Okay. And Michael Pena, this is 1945. Michael Pena is straight out of the hood today. I mean, he, he's sitting up there. He got a fat gold chain on. Look at that hair and bone he got right there. Man, he, that's got a, it's got a, a, a Catholic cross on it. He's, no, man, shit. That's some cholo shit right there. Oh my God. And he even got that look like, look, look at him. Hey, I said we're going to shoot some Nazis today or what, man? That's just Michael Pena. Yeah, man. What's up with these fucking Nazis, man? We're going to shoot them or what, man? These pendejos. <laughs> these, yeah. yeah. <laughs> these pinche Nazis. Pinche pendejo Nazis. Look at them. Straight out of L.A. 
<laughs> you ain't. He can't leave that fucking L.A. alone, yeah. man. He, <laughs> that's Michael Pena man, bringing that, that. That's Michael Pena in L.A. <laughs> hey, we're gonna get a burrito after this, man, or what, man? That's racist, right there. Yeah, Why no do that? <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> Look at him. You awful, man. <laughs> you ain't no good. Hey, man, just accept me for who I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Martin. Let's go ahead and get into some of the calls with the people. They've been waiting for a while to get in with us. Let's see what we got right here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the old Gmail right here, Martin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, what's his first, what does his first email say? Oh, it says... <laughs> Give Martin a gold star, but only if he earns oh, it. Man. Martin gets a gold star. But of course, Martin, to get that gold star, you have Who to. What are we playing play for tonight, Jay? What are we playing for tonight? We're not playing for anything. Okay. We gotta do that. I like that idea, man. I love that idea that you have. Let's uh let's get somebody that will uh that you you'll sponsor. Yeah. If you can get three answers or or more. Then they get a prize. Mm-hmm. That's a yeah, good that's way. a good way to that's do it. That's a good way to bring people in. And if you get all five, they get a bonus. Okay. I don't know what the bonus will be. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see you to the house, Mark. <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that tingling. What y'all right. got to eat? All right, uh, Martin. We're going to play this game now. In this movie, I could have done something like best tank movies or something like that. No, you know, best World War movies. I, I tried, but I couldn't find besides, besides Tank Girl, I couldn't find anything that you would know or anybody out there would know. I found a, old, a whole bunch of old movies that were about tanks, yeah. but none that you would know or I would know either. So what I did was here, I said, you know, this movie, all it all comes down to this crew making a last stand. Right. And so I thought about some movies where People had to make, make a last stand. Their last stand. What do we need to make this last stand? We need a certain thing in each one of these movies. Oh. When I name these things that we need for to make this last stand, Martin, you give me the movie it's from. Okay. You got it? All right. Okay, Martin. Sounds tough, but Martin, Martin, we'll see. It's, it's not. For example, Martin, number one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the wrong question right there. Okay. <laughs> I'm going back to the first one. The first Hey Martin, for this last stand, we need a badly <laughs> dressed Robin Thick. <laughs> We need Beetlejuice and Robin Thicke. <laughs> no, let me go to the right game. People, if y'all are listening, this is separated from the show. I went back to the to the show we had earlier, or the quiz we had earlier. But let me get to the right one. Oh, uh, here we go, Martin. Okay, to make this last stand, Martin, to make this last stand, we need a wild group of outlaws. Martin, I've got to pull my music up. Hold on. Martin, to make this last stand, we need a wild group of outlaws. Martin, do you think you have an answer here? I have an answer. I don't okay. know if it's the right one. You don't know if it's the right one? Well, what about you? You toasties out there. Martin's not too sure. Are you sure? It's kind of an old film. You might know it. Ask, you don't ask your mama. I'll give you a chance to do that. Or ask your grandmama. You got it? Okay, you asking? All right, Martin, what do you think? The Wild Bunch? Martin, you are one wild and crazy <laughs> guy. Look at that. It is The Wild Sam Bunch. Sam Peckinpah. Sam Peckinpah. One of Sam Peckinpah's greatest films, man. The scene where they go into the Mexicans and they say, "You know, it, fuck this." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They go in and try to get that one Mexican that's a friend of theirs. They yeah. say, "You can't have that Mexican. That's ours. We want Angel." And then they all end up getting their ass shot up. <laughs> yeah, but they take out a bunch of guys in the process. That Gatling gun scene. And yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, because they weren't they gonna like leave and they're just like, nah. Man, they had it. They had, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but they, they just got through like having sex with some Mexican women, uh-huh. got through eating, had all this money. Yeah. All they had to do was just cross the board and get the fuck out. Yeah. Uh-huh. But one of ways, it just takes, like with Brad Pitt, it just takes one person to give a speech. Uh-huh. And everybody else like, well, fuck, man, after this, I can't back out. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm going to look like the pussy. <laughs> That's funny because that was the whole thing with John Bernthal and, and, and Fury where everybody was like, well, I'm in. I'm in. It's like. Oh, man, the kid's in, too? Yeah, <laughs> he's like, shit. Fuck. Yeah. But I forgot who some of these uh, these guys are here. It's uh, who, who, uh, Who's that? Warren Oates. Warren Oates, there. Uh, uh, Ernest Borgnine. Ernest Borgnine. Is that, um, damn, is that Lee J. Cobb? No, no, no. You're talking about right here, the yeah. leader? No, no. no. Who, who is that? I'm, I don't know. I'm forgetting his name. I was hoping you would tell me. <laughs> uh, I know, I know it. Like, later, I'll look it up and go like, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I know the name, too. I, I just forgot. 
And y'all don't know if I'm lying or not, but that's what I'm going to stick with. And the other dude looks like Kevin Durant. All right, Martin. Let's go to our next one right here. Martin, to make this last stand, we just need two handsome outlaws. We just need we, we just need two handsome outlaws. Martin, mm. do you have any idea what I'm talking about right here? Martin, for to, to make this last stand, we just need two handsome outlaws. Uh, Not a group like the last one. I know. I'm, I'm going to take a guess, but I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you people take a guess at first before we have Martin give his answer out right here. And if you have it, again, kind of an old one, but it's a popular one. Some of you might know it. It's a cultural, it's a cultural icon movie. Even if you were too young to be born when this thing was out. Martin, you got it? I'm going to go with Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I'm going to go with you being right, Martin. Again. Martin, look at that. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, the original Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> they didn't tell you about it, but I know what they were doing. Them two pretty guys out there. <laughs> Hanging out and making that last stand in the building. You know what, man? I heard something really depressing about this. So Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, you know, I talk about the last stand because that's one of the most popular parts of the, uh, right. of the movie. The yeah, Bolivian Ar Army comes after them. Yeah. And they, they got that last shot where they say, you know what, fuck it, we going down like man. And they run out, they do that freeze frame, where they take it on the whole army. You know their ass got shot up. Oh, yeah. But they did it in a heroic way. Yeah. Not in real life. Uh, they both got shot up inside the compound, from what I understand. Oh, it's about the real Butch Cassidy? The real Cassidy? Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. Uh -huh. And one of them was so injured that the other just cradled him in his arms and just put him out of his misery. Damn. Like, like shot him himself. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Now, y'all can't look at this movie the same way again. You're not like, <laughs> God damn, you have to ruin this shit for us, man. <laughs> we were heroes, man. All right. Martin, let's go to our third last stand. All right. All right, Martin, you ready? Ready. All right. Martin, to make this last stand, we need to hold up inside a police station. Mm. To make this last stand, Martin, we need to hold up inside a police station. Shit. What about you people out there? Now, this one's a little more contemporary, so you might have this one. I would give you more information, but it would be given away. I can't do that. Martin? Motherfucker, I know the answer. I just cannot lock onto it. And I cannot accept that, Martin. I, know. I can I know. only accept answers here if you know it. Meanwhile, these toasters out there, they're, they're screaming at you. I Martin, know they is are. this? Come on, man. Okay. Assault on Precinct 13. Man, that was suspenseful. Martin, <laughs> Martin, you made your last stand. You got the answer right. Yes, Martin. It is John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13. <laughs> There's two versions of that, actually. Right. One with Ethan Hawke. One with Ethan Hawke in it, yeah, which is the inferior one, if you ask me. Right, right. It's it's funny. I just had, like, the taking of, of Pelham 1, 2, 3 in my head. I, oh, that's I, what I you want to keep saying. Out of, the, out, of, out of the way. I'm like, no, it's not you. Would you stop? They kept going like, no, no, it's me, me. Like, no, it's not you. <laughs> two no. asses fighting each other. <laughs> yeah. I like this version of uh, Assault on Precinct oh, on pre on pre 13, on Precinct 13, because uh, it was very controversial at the time. Do you, do you remember? The, did you ever see the movie? No, I never saw the original. I think this was uh, 1977 when this came out. Mm -hmm. Low-budget film. And they barely got a release on this because there was a scene in the movie where a little girl got shot. Yeah. And by, today we'd be like, shit. By, by the police? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, no. Okay. No, no, this is a white girl, so I didn't shoot oh, her. Okay. No, man, it was a... Uh, not today movies. We, 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 we treat kids like shit. We don't care. Right. But back then, this was shocking for people. I wanted vanilla twist. Oh, oh bitch, you got bullet flavor now. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? And let me let me rewind this because even she looked like. <laughs> the, the, watch the, yeah, the watch fuck this. I do to you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Watch, watch this shit right here. I'm surprised she like looking at a guy with a gun. I want a vanilla. He should have shot her ass. <laughs> bitch, don't you see me with a gun in my hand right now? Yeah, yeah. You get death flavor. <laughs> I wanted Vanilla Twist. Watch this. She's looking like, God damn, can you do this in movies? <laughs> 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 yeah, very controversial scene right there at the time today. People like, I don't, I don't get the deal. Whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you just shot one? Well, here's strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, look, look like a ketchup pack exploded on her face. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's the other thing. This shit, today, this shit looks fake. 
you know what? what like, like what? What did he have in that gun? Like a ketchup packet from McDonald's? <laughs> Look at it. Sploosh. <laughs> anyway, that shit looked fake as hell. That shit look like, you can hit me with ketchup. <laughs> All right, Martin. This is the next last stand that we're gonna make. All right. All right, Martin. For this last stand, we need claws, time travel, and telekinesis. Martin, do you know this? For this last stand, we need claws, time travel, and telekinesis. Martin, think you know? I think I know. All right, what about you people out there? See, I'm going up. I'm, I'm, I'm making the movies more contemporary as I go. So some of you might, might have this automatically. Right out, right, right out the gate. You know what it is. Martin, what about you? Yeah, X-Men. Days of Future Past. And Martin, you are wrong. I'm sorry. Martin. You said X-Men Last Stand? You said Days of Future Past. Martin, is X-Men Last Stand. No, no, no. You had time travel in there. Last Stand has time travel in it too, doesn't it? No. It does not? It does not. Because I was going to say X-Men Last Stand, but you included time travel. There's no time travel There's in There's no time travel in Last Stand. You sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure. Is he right? <laughs> <laughs> We we'll give you that. You're right. Okay. Okay. You're right. You're right. Quit okay, looking at right. me like that. Shit. Right. <laughs> I'll put this picture back up, though. <laughs> yes, Martin. What is it? Days of Future Past. Yeah. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Last Stand was that the one that just came out? No, that was Days of Future Past. That was Days of Future Past. Last Stand is X Men Three, the one directed by Brett Ratner. That. That, yeah, that title just up. fucked me all up in there, man. <laughs> and Wolverine's like, get your shit straight, Corey, if I cut your ass. Uh, you gonna pick the one of the worst movies to quiz Martin on? All right, Martin. You got it. You got it then. Okay. Martin, this is our last, last stand right here. All right. I know people talk about me. Corey, get your shit straight. <laughs> you stupid son of a bitch. All right, Martin, for this last stand, we need a cyborg and a jackass. Some people say, we well, we got one in the room right now. <laughs> and, he ain't, and he ain't a cyborg. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Martin, uh, you got any idea what I'm talking I about here? I don't have any idea. You don't have any idea. We need a, Martin, we need a cyborg and a jackass. And a jackass. <sighs> hmm. Martin's thinking, people. While he's thinking, what about you? Think you got oh, it? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you got it? Yeah, I got it. All right, all right. Got your answer, people? All right, before the music ends, Martin, what is it? The Last Stand by uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, Martin. Arnold <laughs> Schwarzenegger and uh, Johnny Knoxville. And Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> Are they expected to win anything with that goddamn fool next to him? I don't know. Ooh, Schwarzenegger looks rough, man. Oh, yeah, man. I was looking at some old pictures of Schwarzenegger for something. And you don't know how much a person has aged when, unless you do a side by side yeah. comparison. God damn, he looks he looks like a he know, looks he, like Thanos. He he does. He looks like a cross between Thanos and a Muppet right now. <laughs> he looks like the, he looks like he'd be sitting up in that balcony with those two old Muppets. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tell us some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Martin, you got five out of five. Woo. Martin, I'm gonna give you one more song right there. Yes, they don't fire tonight. Five out of five, Martin. What a night, oh what a night <laughs> Martin kick ass at these games <laughs> Him winning's just not the same I want him to lose, oh what a night <laughs> Hey, do you remember Hong Kong Fooey's secret identity? Yeah, What's his Scatman Kravis <laughs> Hey, is that right? <laughs> what was it? I don't, he was a janitor I know, I know, but his name Wasn't it Penry? I don't know Okay, never mind I don't know that's what's next. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I agree. All right, man. That is our game. That is our review. And you know what? That's our show. As far as far as reviews and games go, that is the show. Mm -hmm. That is the show, people. I want to tell people something. Hey, listen. It's at that point now where I gotta thank everybody for supporting us. All you people who are subscribers out there and you Pay to watch the streams and you keep the site going. Thank you very much. For we those who are you. listening, I, I appreciate that support from you too. We're soon going to be doing some sort of agreement, some partnership where we're going to be getting paid for the streams. But it's really the video streams, not the audio that keeps us afloat. But we, we appreciate that. 
If you haven't tried the video streams, try it. We have a seven-day trial period. If you don't like it, no hard feelings. And even if you do sign up and you decide to cancel, you can do that very easy at any time. And again, we appreciate you just coming here. Or you could just buy a show here and there with 99 cents. Not, cent. not even a whole dollar. Yeah, not even a whole dollar. You might just like watching the movie review extravaganza. That's the one you watch. Pay for it and see what you think about it. Either way it goes, if you just if you pay by listening, you pay by watching, or you pay by clicking, we appreciate all the love and we give it right back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that is very sincere. Now, Martin, <clears throat> I gotta tell people one more time before we get into before we actually get into the calls. I'll give I'll do one more on, uh, I'll post the I'll post the email address one more time for you out there. Again, if you'd like to email us or have a call on the show, you can do so at kcoolmans at gmail.com. That's K-C-O-O-L-M-A-N-Z at gmail.com. Email us with any kind of questions, comments, insults, compliments, feedback, advice. We need all of that to make a show. You're part of it and we need you. Also, if you'd like to have a call, send us your phone number on the email and we will call you back. Don't have to put in any work getting up and pick up the phone and dialing. We make it easy for you. Making that house call for you. I'm on Twitter at KCoolMan and Facebook.com forward slash Corey.Coleman.5. Oh, settle down, settle down. There's so much work. I'm so tired. Just type in Corey Coleman. I'm one of the first ones to pop up. If not the first one, Martin. Oh, if you want to reach me, go to Twitter, Martin underscore no Martin underscore no